Oh, welcome, welcome to this week's episode of Grow or Die. I am Laura Chestikoff from Firebird Summit. What's up, everybody? I'm Lawrence Henderson from Boss LLC. It, it's been a minute, my friend. It has, it has, and not not for fun, exciting, diversionary reasons either. So yeah. I think that's that'll that's a good launch pad for today. I think um, whether it's you know very very personal stuff, mm. whether it's watching all of my beloved Ukrainians being herded around the country by Russian missiles, whatever it is, it's been a rough, rough few weeks. And I think it's time to come back to an important aspect of that, which is when shit is just bad. And sometimes it is, and there's sometimes nothing you can do about it. How, how do you make sure that you're getting through it. What is, what's, what, what helps and what, what is meaningful and where do you go? Yeah. So let's, let's start with that. You, you had a, you had a pretty, yeah. a pretty long February. I had, I had, and uh, so, um, you know, me, me and my family, we, we, uh, jokingly, even, you know, in the midst of tears and crying of loss of a family member, um, we, we all kind of jokingly was like, this was one of those clubs you don't sign up for. Um, and, and nobody raises their hand and volunteers for the loss of a, a, a loved one and, um, experiencing all of the, the feels of, of anger, frustration, and, and one you mentioned helplessness. Um, but the, the biggest thing that I would say helped navigate throughout the stages of the of, of all those emotions was was really not turning people away um to be in support of me personally um and and like us coaches I had all the training in the world and I'm so grateful for having all the coach training while going through this um because I can only imagine like I'm watching my family members not deal well, or when they when they did feel it, or I saw it come up on them, it was in these extreme ways. Um, and where, but I found myself in position to support, to help, and and again, not pacify, but hold space. And and I think more than anything in these times, it's, hey, what do we we personally need, and then our communities of people, what do they need from us, and what do they need us to be? Um, and I found that to be extremely helpful um, as as a practice for me personally, and being in support of others. So, what are some of the things that you that you're finding, you know, kind of some solace in and beginning to operate in? Yeah, so it, it was interesting. So I was, um, you know, I started a new a new day job, not uh, very recently, not new three at the moment. And last week we were actually all together in in Las Vegas of all sort of preposterous places. Um, when you know we and and you know my my new company is um, the global organization. We have you know we have about 125 people or so in Ukraine. Um, you know, and I've been in and out of Ukraine a lot. I used to work for a Ukrainian company. You know, I've spent a lot of time in Ukraine. Um, I have. A whole bunch of friends there and so watching the buildup of what was what was happening watching it coming sort of sucked right I felt very kind of isolated I would check in with my friends in Ukraine but you know like I'm on the other side of the planet there's not you know there's there's nothing too terribly tangible that that you could do and the reality is is that a lot of people you know it's like a lot of other things right you can see the warning signs but to really believe that it's going to happen is a big leap. And so I think for a lot of people, um, when it finally happened, it came as a huge shock. Like I have, I have friends who, um, you know, did have to leave or who did leave Kiev to, to move to the Western part of the country, but they didn't, they didn't necessarily move fast enough before the Ukrainian government did, um, made some lockdowns so that men between the ages of, of 18 and 60 are not allowed to leave the country. They need to stay in, in place for national defense. Um, and there were some that, you know, probably could have gotten out if they had been more convinced that this was going to happen. And so really knowing that they were stuck and they were very trapped, you know, you, you see oh, there's a lot of stuff on the news at the moment about, you know, husbands and fathers saying goodbye to their families because their family, they're trying to, he's trying to get their family out of the country so that they're safe, even though he's staying for, to, you know, join, join the civilian defense. 
Um, and so watching like all of this unfold felt very lonely when I was at home. You know, my husband is, is great. And he's met a number of my Ukrainian friends, but you know, it's, it still felt very isolated. And so I have to say as much as Las Vegas isn't where you want to go, <laughs> watching a word descend on people you love, the reality of it was, I was very grateful not to be alone when, when it finally happened. And, you know, we, we came in Thursday morning to what was supposed to be a full day session of strategic planning and, and things like that for this year. And, you know, we had to start with, you know, our employees, the contingency plan that had been pulled, put into effect, started the night before, you know, getting people out of, trying to get people out of the country who could, not everyone was either in a position to leave their families and go. Others, you know, again, as it turned out, didn't move fast enough. So like couldn't leave, um, you know, and there was a lot of stuff there, but what I kept, what I kept coming back to was, I can't believe I'm sitting in a casino in Las Vegas, like talking about this, but at the same time, it was so much better. If I'd been at home, I probably would have been a complete and totally away. Um, and that part made so, just that physical proximity to other people who were also experiencing a whole flood of emotions, right? And to your point, different people are having different degrees of emotional reaction at different points in time. And, and so it's not like we're all in it exactly at the same place at the same time, but to be in it together made a huge, huge, huge difference. And, and it's in those moments, right? And, and I know in our coaching journey and our process of development, leadership development and all those things, it's, it's those, um, it was one certification program I was going through. They called it a, called it moments that matter. And to really connect life and the work we do and who we do it with, it just creates this, this other layer of, of connection. And, and that, and again, it's not a sympathy, but it's, can we empathize with another human being and, and, really show ourselves in what you just described there and, and you know what's what we processed over the last several weeks with my family is this this another layer of humanity right and and others saying hey i'm so sorry for x y z but you not hearing it as oh poor baby i'm sorry that's going through that but it's like no you hear how can i support you now and and i think that's been for me in this season of life in organizations, if you ever want to, to 10X uh, loyalty from a business standpoint is show some humanity um, in how you navigate these spaces. And again, this, this is, you know, on the, on the, the crux of this is here, this is another global thing that's, there are ripples to, to this happening. And it continues to put in front of us like leaders, Again, what was the three things? You you can't talk about race, religion, politics. Yep. Now, there was the things that you didn't, you don't bring to the workplace, but here we are, another global thing happening. And you all as an organization, kudos to you all to just hold space. And I think I think that's the biggest thing as we think about the next wave of leaders who are able to really tap in and get the best out of people, I think they're gonna have that element of humanity um, that needs to be front and center, but it all they also help people understand it's not always always the squishy stuff. It's just being present. Well, and it's 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 interesting that you talk about the leadership, right? Because I think that was one of those things, you know, again, I used to work for a Ukrainian company. We're all, I, and, and my new company is in the same space. They, you know, they're primary prime competitors with my old company. And they have a sort of frenemy status, right? The CEOs talk all the time. Like there's, you know, we have, there's a lot of overlapping relationships, right? My current company is based in Romania, which shares a border with Ukraine. And so like, there's a lot of overlap. There's a lot of people in common, you know, people move back and forth and it's a small ecosystem, right? We all live, you know, we all circle around together. And so I think to me, what was, um, again, helpful was a watching leadership move quickly, right? The 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 troop movement began on Wednesday night, uh, Wednesday night, California, you know, Pacific Coast time. It was very late, you know, in the evening. But by Thursday morning, we got up and we went back into into our session. This was how we started the day. It was, okay, it finally happened. You know, we have these people. We're going to do everything we can to get them out. You know, we've got 
but there was a really great sense of like the people are what matter most. It was, okay, all the people who were in the country, you know, they, they're going to continue to get paid. We're going to get them cash. Like, you know, again, you're in a war zone, right? You had ATMs were not being restocked. So there was no cash. To be had. There was gas rationing. We're only allowed 20 liters of gas to get across a country, like almost the size of Texas. Like, you know, there was, there was, there were all these very practical logistical problems and leadership was very clear. You know, I talked to my old CEO at my Ukrainian company and he said they had started moving people out of the country into Slovakia a year, a week before. Right. So they had a lot of people that they had, had been just preemptively trying to get into safety. The ones who were able to go, get up and go quickly. The ones who were, you know, the women, single women who didn't necessarily have, you know, some of the, the conflict about, you know, leaving behind a, a husband or a brother, um, you know, and so watching all of these leaders step up, I mean, it's a horrible, horrible damn reason to have to do it. But I think it's been really, um, it's been really amazing. Another, another former colleague who's now CEO of his own company, he, you know, he lives in the Bay Area here. And he's in Warsaw right now with a borrowed minivan that he's stocking and doing milk runs into Western Ukraine to take supply, supplies just to help with the humanitarian part. He has a, I, in the picture that he posted on LinkedIn, he's got, you know, a, a, the back of the truck is full of, you know, diapers and, but it's, you know, it's below zero. They're having in this snowstorm and you have people like standing, waiting in line. And so watching, watching these guys kind of put their money where their mouth is, watching these guys step up, I think has been really phenomenal. Um, and it's been heartening because there isn't necessarily a lot we can do. You know, I check in with my friends on a daily basis and there are days when I'm like, okay, I feel like I'm just, you know, being an ag now, but to your point, right. Sometimes it's just asking and they keep telling me, thank you for checking. Thank you for asking. And I'm like, okay, well, I kind of don't want to be a pain in the ass but I'm like totally worried and I'm watching, you know, news clips that are making you, you know, cry. Like, this is so terrible. I'm like, no, thank you for checking. We're still okay. Or we're moving here, or whatever it is. You know, one of my, one of my old business partners, you know, her, she and her husband are in the Western part of the country where they're safe, but her father, who's, you know, more over 60 years old, went and joined the military, you know? And like, what do you say to that? Like, I mean, what, and, and so at the end of the day, all I can say is I'm thinking about you and I'm worried. Are you okay? But like there, otherwise you just feel helpless. Yeah. And I, th I think what you're, what you're describing there is as well is just the, the nuances of, of life happening. And then again, it's, it's that, it's that old thing. Uh, you know, Mike, Mike Tyson, like everybody has a plan to get hit in the face. Um, and, and this is literally people who are being hit in the face. And, and again, life happening to on various levels to to us all. And, and I love what you said there. It's just people understanding, like, I know you, Alora. Like, I know it's coming from an amazingly authentic, you care about me place. And I think that's therein lies the difference between the person who sounds like they're checking a box of checking in and the person who they they hear your heart it's through your words through your text through your message through that voice call and i think for a lot of us there's there's this genuineness that we long for from from people we want to do life with or we are doing life with and it's those moments and and over you know, the past several months and, you know, dealing with our family stuff, it was those voice messages from people that just was like, hey, just checking on you. Yep. And literally was like, and, 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 and just what you did, don't want anything. I just want to know you're okay. Yep. That's all. That's it. And, and, and I think it was those that I was like, that hit me in the heart. That was like, okay, people are thinking about you. And it was something in particular, you know, cause there, there, there was for those couple of weeks, I couldn't deal. And so I had my admin, I was like, clear me, clear, clear everything. I was like, just get everything off my calendar. Um, but her words, when I got, when I got back, she was like, Lawrence, like there are so many people just checking on you. Like they could care less about what was on the calendar. They just want to know about you. And could they reach out to you? And, and just all of those things. And I was just like, and it's to what you said, it's like, okay, how can I be of support and put my values into action? 
And it was, and sometimes it's just your words. It's just you being there, being available. And I think what we're watching in real time, and this is kind of our generation's thing of how are we going to show up? Well, and I think this is yeah. also where you realize that, um, you know, whatever whatever community you have and you count on either fits or it doesn't. And I think this is, you know, and, and obviously what you guys went through, a lot, of the, a lot of the community you had was both direct immediate family members and then kind of the broader circle that kind of came out of that. Um, and I think that it, it, almost, it almost doesn't, matter right because there are people there there are always some people in your life who are in your life because you got dna in common and you ain't gonna be able to get rid of them even though you might want to and then they're the ones who you pick and they're the ones that you take along with you wherever the hell you go as long as you can keep them around and i think that the you know obviously look some all of us have family members that we wish you know would just kind of stop bothering us from now until the end of time but but it also becomes really clear, like who, who do you go to when you're, when you, especially I think when you are just hurting and there's nothing that you can really do, there's nothing you can do. You don't know to ask for it. Like you don't know of anything you can ask for that you think will help, but just like, I am feeling horrible and miserable. And I just want to be with someone who appreciates that either why or who's feeling it as well. And just that sense of not being alone at a time that you would otherwise feel very alone, I think is really a very telling test for you to use for yourself to measure up against the people that you're surrounded by. Yeah, that's a, that's a huge, that's a huge one. Um, man, that's a, that's a really good thought, Laura, and, and particularly creating these new almost kind of ranges of, of things and for, for people and the scaling of, of emotion. And I, I like to say we, people are in our lives for reasons, seasons, and, and lifetimes, and, and they'll prove it out. Right. And again, there's kind of the ones that you're born with and the ones that you kind of, you, you go through things with. Um, and, and I think those, those ebb and flow. Um, and, and one of the things that I think inside of organizations, right. It goes back to that, the kind of best friend at work thing and, and who, would I be willing to go through a fire with you or, or not based on our interactions and based on, you know, just life in general. Um, and I think this, what, what this season of life has really proven out for a lot of people is, you know, they're finding who, who are the people that they would want to go into a fire with. Um, and then, like you said, those who you like, you know what, if yeah, I didn't hear from you again, yeah, I will be okay. Uh, and, and I have some, I have a list of those, but, but I think, the, the main point for kind of the audience and, and for, for, you know, people who listen to us, it's, it's really tapping into who do you want to be like that out of this thing, I was like, okay, the legacy of the people in these moments, right? If you think about the president of, of the Ukraine, you think about, you know, that 65 year old father who is bearing arms to, to defend his, his country, himself, his family, and, and what, what these people do. And you think about the lives of, of, and legacy of those. And one, I think one of the most telling moments was that, and uh, I don't know if you ever did this exercise growing up where they make you write your obituary. Um, I've done time, it. Yeah. Right. But I, it's, I find it extremely funny of when the timing of those types of things, because it's like, when you do them, you're like, you're projecting a bit on what you'll experience, what you what you what done, you'll accomplish, what, what you'll you accomplish. Yeah. yeah. Actually, but, I find I find when you first write it, it's yeah. very accomplishment centric. Oh, you did this oh, yeah. and accomplish like, and it's very like yeah, almost very material in that. There way. it is, and to hear it come back about my father, yeah. and from high school teammates people he went to high school with to the church he pastored and for all of those people to tell the same character story about him was like he was a walking living example of values and action and his watch his life his words are few and I think like man that's what I could sign up for 
Yeah. Like, and, and, and those, when you, and again, that legacy of, of these moments, right? Are you stacking moments that matter? And that's all everybody was describing. And what, what I feel like we're in is we're stacking and we have the opportunity to create some moments that matter. And what does that mean to us? And, and so, you know, for you, however I can show up for you as a peer, as a friend, as a podcast co-host, whatever it is, I, I want to be, I want to be available. And I think that's, that's a message for the entire audience. How will you show up and how will you create moments that matter? Well, and I think that what's so great about it, and it's funny, because I was one of the ones who messaged your, your admin when I got the message from her, but I also, but here's the thing, I, this is the part that I didn't, I didn't think about as, as deliberately as I have in the last week, which is that I didn't want to bother you. So I messaged, so I sent the message to her and I'm like, you know what, Lawrence is busy. He's dealing with family. It's, you know, he's got out easy. So I'm going to check with her and see that, you know, he's okay. And it's funny because like, it was, that was my natural inclination. And part of it is like, you know, I tend to focus on, oh, no, no, when I'm busy, I don't like to be distracted kind of, you know, just my preference because that's my preference. And then what this last week has done is like, there's nobody else. Like I have to check on individuals, right? Because everybody's scattered. People are in bomb shelters. People have left the country. Like they're all over the place. Like there isn't a, Hey, I can just check in on the team kind of thing. It's like, no person by person, I have to chat with them directly to understand what's going on. And it made me more aware of the fact that, yeah, I did. I cheated. I went to your admin to see and make sure that you were okay. I didn't, I'm like I, the thought in my head, and I, it was just the voice that was there was, He's busy. It's a hard time for his family right now. Don't bug Lawrence. Just make sure that like, you know, he's, he's doing as okay as possible. Um, but it's, it's a good reminder that like, that's just because that's, you know, just because my thing is, Hey, when I'm busy, I don't want to be distracted. doesn't mean that's everybody else's thing. It's kind of your point, your original point about, you know, walking a mile in someone's shoes, right? Your preference is not automatically someone else's. And sometimes the best thing you can do is ask, like, how can I best support you right now? Do you want me to just, you know, kind of hang tight until you're ready to come back? Or do you like, is it helpful to like hear from me every single night? Are you still okay? Are you still okay? Are you still okay? And like, I think it's one of those things we feel like we should know the answer to. So a lot of times we just don't ask or we default to what we would want or what we think we would want. And especially when you're in a really extreme situation, what we think we would want and what actually we probably would want are not necessarily the same thing Mm, that 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 is huge because I was coining a a phrase during this time of positive distraction, and because of what I do, I would it would make me smile, like every message. And then what Selena was like, "Hey, people are asking about you. They just want to know, you know, what do you want me to say for an update?" And I would I'll give her kind of the framework, and and at the end I would say thank you. But because again, I'm a I'm a uh, words of affirmation guy. Like I like I'm high fives and hugs now, right? Like that's that's me all day. And 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 here's the thing. But understanding that's not everybody's preference. And so even in that, I found myself like, hey, I know they got me, right? Those those I knew was like I know they got me. And and so it's like when I come back, I need to come up on the net so they know I'm back and I'm in the game because I know. And and so so thank you thank you for that because there were several there were several of my buddies that I'm like I know they waiting on me I know they waiting yeah. on me yeah. yeah well and and again like it's so easy to get caught in yeah. your own head you know when mm -hmm. I was you know I was 13 when my mom died and I remember like vacillating in this very extreme kind of paradigm between yes I wanted people to check on me versus like no, just leave me the hell alone. Like, don't, don't talk to me. Don't look at me. Don't make me answer your dumb questions. Like, just leave me alone. But part of that was also, I was a teenage girl for Christ's sake. Like, I, like, that was the emotional vacillation that I lived with, you know, long before she ever got sick. Like, that just didn't make it better. But at the end of the day, like, it's so easy to default to what you think you would want in those circumstances. And especially if you've never been in them. And I have to freely admit, I've never had my home bombarded by bombs by, you know, a, a neighboring country. So like, I, I have no good way of saying, well, shit, what the hell, like, what the hell can I do? 
And so there was, I think that in some ways kind of stripped out the second guessing, right? Because again, in your case, you know, I've been through something similar. So like I, I imposed my preference into how I, how I, you know, handled communication with you during that time. Whereas this one, I feel like maybe it was just because it was so far out of any framework of a comparison that I had for myself. And there was no, there was no easy way out, right? Again, there wasn't like one person I could contact to find out about a hundred. It was like, no, you got to hunt and peck and you got to find where they are and, and kind of do it the hard way. So I didn't have that. I didn't have the voice in my head, head saying, oh, well, stop, you know, don't be a pain, don't be a pain, don't be a pain. They're clearly got bigger fish to fry right now, right? And so I think that part sometimes strips away your own like inner voices and judgment because you're like, I don't have any idea what the hell to do in this situation. And, and I think that goes to the basics of, of our training, right? In coaching, it's just like, just ask. Yeah. Just get, just, don't, don't, don't try to find a perfect question. Just ask the question. And, and, and I think even, even in, like you said, there's, there's no way um, to anticipate people's reaction to a question or anything. I, and I, th- I really do think in these moments, it's just like, are people really there? Because you have those who are experiencing it and it's just like, man, I'm in it. And, and I would really love to be distracted at this moment um, with all these emotions in the world. And, and I, I, I said to somebody else, I was like, I've been navigating this whirlwind of, of things. And, and um, even in those moments and in, in just, you know, being a combat veteran and the, the, the ups and downs and in, in, in emotions of brand new traumatic experiences, because that's really what it is. It's what it's what war is for those that are experiencing it. It's a traumatic experience, um, particularly if you're on a, a, the side of uncertainty. Um, and, and again, um, it, it's one of those situations that there's there's nothing in your mind that you could formulate uh, as a good response or good question, except for, hey, thinking of you, what can I do? Yeah, that's it. And, and not judge it, not, not, I should have said more. What could you say? Um, it's it, it just really. Well, no, and I think that's, I think that's yeah. actually a really important point too, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's so easy and, you know, it's just, we all, you know, especially coaches are trained a lot. That like the voice in our head is usually our own words judge. And so when you start second guessing, like, I shouldn't say that, or I should say more, or like, it's like, okay, no, just like, okay, stop, stop the inner critic. The inner critic is actually in your way now. Like you're talking about someone who is hurting, whether it's because, you know, they lost a family member because they are in a battlefield, whatever it is, like they are, they are in some degree of pain. There's kind of no second guessing. All you can do is ask, is there any, I'm thinking of you, is there anything I can do? Period. Like there's, you know, and, and, and sometimes you might have an idea and might, you know, have a suggestion or something, but if, at the end of the day, like if you spend all your time second guessing, like, oh, I should do more, I could do that, or well, do they need this, or would this be more helpful? Like, then you're just not getting to the to the part of it, which is, you know, they feel alone or they feel, you know, hurting or whatever it is. And and just knowing that you're there can actually be the only thing that really does help. And that's almost the, and it's a conversation we had before about ego, right? Uh, and, and it's in your moment of, I want to reach out, you allow the voice in your own head to be louder than the reason why and the sentiment behind why you want to reach out in the first place. And it really yeah. is just to check in. And, and, and I think in this process, in this season of life, um, and somebody said it, uh, I was meeting with, uh, my, my social media manager today and she's like I don't know what an angry you looks like she was like you're you're always in this mode of put it in perspective put it in perspective and I was like that's hard work <laughs> I, said, I, said, I said trust me I said people have met crazy me um and I said I and it shows up from time to time I said but when you think about just life in and of itself is say, hey, how quickly can I get to putting things in perspective? And, and not that the, the whole, it could be worse because obviously people are experiencing the worst of, of what life has to offer. And, and, but it's really put it in perspective. What can I can control? What things are out of my control? 
and then kind of, okay, move forward with the known facts and the known information. And, and us in support of these people in our communities, it's, hey, how can I support you with some of those knowns? And, and again, and if, and if there is nothing, okay, thinking of you, I'm going to check back in. And I, I actually, had one of my buddies was like, uh, don't, don't get mad at me. I'm just going to keep checking in. I'm just letting you know now. I'm just going to keep checking in. Like, and it was like yeah. day of, day of funeral. He's like, my phone is ringing. It's him. And he's yeah. like, I was like, he's like, and I just put him the voicemail. He was like, yeah, I probably, it's probably a bad time, but, uh, I told you just I was checking, checking in. <laughs> I was like, yeah. That's what really was the message. No. And, but I think that's also really, you know, I think it's fantastic on a couple points. One that he's at your expectations. He's like, look, I don't, I don't need you to answer. Yep. I'm just, I'm letting you know, this is what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. But I think it also comes back to your, your point too, which is like you at some point had to make a choice that, you know, angry Lawrence wasn't going to get you where you needed to go. And, and your ability to navigate the last month is I'm sure very, very different because you made that choice in the past than it would have been if you had, right? I mean, you were talking about how you know, you watch people's reactions and some people are having like very, like nothing, nothing, nothing. And then kaboom, sort of like extreme stuff, right? And that's very easy to do when you haven't been doing this work to be able to understand that, you know what? There are things I will never be able to control. And so I can't, I can't be so angry that they're out of my control that it prevents me from controlling the things that I can. Um, starting with my own, my own approach to how I react to things that come up. And I think that part becomes one of those just useful reminders about, you know what, there is always going to be shit that you cannot control. And some of it's going to be truly terrible. And so, yes, absolutely. You can get mad. I, I'm, I watch the news and I get upset and I cry and like, you know, there's plenty of stuff, like you can get mad about it. But if you get, if you let it, completely prevent you from doing the things that you can do then you know six months from now you're just going to feel worse like that's not actually going to help you come to the other side and be like okay I did what I could it wasn't as much as I wish I could have done there might not have been you know in hindsight maybe I could have done a few different things if I had if I had been aware of something sooner or whatever but at the end of the day like if you get so preoccupied with just being angry at the stuff that is outside of anybody's it's actually i think to me what's been the most phenomenal about watching ukrainian civilian resistance to the russians right because you know i watched a video where um one of the really really hard videos to watch where you see like a father saying goodbye to his family because they're getting on a train to, move, to go to poland and he's staying behind and I, as a policy i i try not to read comments on so online because like invariably there's going to be a troll who says something that just really gets under my skin and I want, and I kept seeing these comments from, from this guy saying, this is so irresponsible for him to leave his family and turn around and like, you know, like he should, like, it's a, it, there, it's a lost cause. Like he needs to just go with his family and, and, and stay alive so he can take care of his kids. And, and I'm watching this and I'm thinking to myself, maybe it is a lost cause. Maybe it is. And, and to be sure, Putin's got a lot more resources at his disposal than, than the Ukrainian government does. But when it comes down to it, he still has to live with the choice that he made. Either, either live or die by it, right? And if he, if he lives and knows that he didn't do what he thought he should do, then that just gives him something to be angry at himself about. And, you know, PTSD coming back out of that kind of a situation is so ripe for so many reasons. The last thing anybody needs is to look back and say, I took the wrong decision at a at a critical juncture. And you will never know for sure how you feel about it in the moment. All you can do is give yourself the grace to say, I am making the best possible decision I can make right now, given what I know, given what I can do in this moment. So I have to just be okay making that decision and moving forward. And so I think that that choice and that sense of, I could be pissed. I could just be pissed. I could just be angry, in which case, what is what does that accomplish? When I was watching a video of unarmed civilians walking out and streaming into a street 
and stopping a tank because, you know, 19 year old Russian tank drivers don't want to run over unarmed civilians. And so like that kind of stuff where I'm like, no, because they all had a choice. Every single one had a choice. Now, I'm not going to say that that poor kid's not going to be in deep trouble with Putin's military, uh, you know, as a result. But everybody in that scenario still had a choice. And you can you can be paralyzed with anger, but then what are you going to do that's productive? And when it's all over and you have to look back, how are you going to feel about the choices you made? Yeah, and I and I think what we're seeing we're seeing in in this is this is not a video game, and and you know you got you got the the fans that are Monday morning quarterback and stuff every every single every single day, and this this is the world we live in now where you know you, it's it's not lost on us that you have critics and and experts um in every field um across the globe and it, it also speaks to something that i will i refuse to engage in 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 refusing to engage in in people's place of privilege um and in in the privilege of safety um in in the privilege of having that as an option to be a monday morning quarterback and watching something from halfway across the world yeah and and yeah. and so for me the, and just what you said, right? The maturity and and the, the honor not to even engage the trash, uh, because again, that's that's what I view it as is trash. Because again, when unless you're in those moments and unless you're that that man, who again, the decision and the ripples of, you know what I with the information that I have and what I see presented in front of me today. This is the best decision I, I believe I have to make for my family, yep. for my and again, though, and those are the those are the things that until you put you find yourself in those types of positions in those types of situations, it's like my my my, my parents used to say growing up, don't put your mouth on nobody. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't I love that actually. Yeah. That's a great expression. Yeah. And honest yeah. to God, social we need like a meme for social media. Oh yeah, says that like this yeah. Is, Keep, keep your mouth to yourself, man. Yep. Like, seriously, mm -hmm. get out of there. Yep. No, and I think that's, I think that's a really, and again, like we, you know, we talk about privilege in a lot of different contexts, but I think that's really something that is very, um, you know, I, I see a lot of people again online, you know, complaining that there isn't more, you know, resistance in Russia. And I keep coming back to the fact that Russia's got to take control of media. Most, like most of the population doesn't have access to information. I, I watched a flame war erupt on LinkedIn the other day because a, a guy in Singapore was siding with the Russians because he had been consuming Chinese and Russian state propaganda that, you know, they were liberating the Ukraine. And, and I can be horrified at that, but it, I also have the privilege of having spent a whole hell of a lot of time in Ukraine and that I, I understand that there is a very, there's a media war that's being fought in this whole battle, specifically to justify the mobilization that Putin's trying to do within his own borders. And, and so like, as much as like, I wanted to just pounce on that guy, like I had this like urge to just like clobber the daylights out of him. But at the same time, I had to acknowledge that I, I do come from a place of privilege where my vantage point helps me see that yeah, okay, he's he's been fed one very specific side of the story and clearly it's accomplishing its task. And I have a problem with that, but like that's, again, that's just having to acknowledge, you know, my own privilege in this situation that, you know, comes back to just all I can do is check in. How are you doing today? And I think as, you know, kind of, kind of grounding statements for this whole conversation today, it's just really around just, pulling forward humanity in, in all of us. And, and again, if you pray, pray. If you send out well wishes and well thoughts, then let's stay on that side of it, right? And, and again, create those moments that matter across the emotions, across the events in, in people's lives. And I think staying present without judgment, um, it's, a, it's something you gotta sign up for to practice. And and I and I would tell anybody to to lean into that work. Don't 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 put your mouth on people in their situations and their circumstances. 
people are trying for the most part to live the best way that they know how. And when you have these global events like what's happening now, I really believe really posture yourself in, in a position to be thoughtful, to be humane, and hope for the best out, out of all of this crazy that's happening. So I think that's actually probably the the thing that I keep trying to remind myself of, right? It's exactly that point, which is that you have a choice to believe it or not. I choose to believe it. And I choose to believe that for the most part, most people are doing the best that they can. And I think in, you know, couldn't get through an episode out of Brene Brown reference, but, you know, she talks about this as well, where like once she stopped and asked, like that question. And she asked her husband this question. Actually, it's a story that I really love. When she asked her husband this question and his answer was, I don't know if people really are doing the best that they can, but I know it helps me to believe that they are. And to me, that right there is the part that matters. That's good. Well, gotta give Brene Brown credit as well. This time it was her hubby, but either way, it is. And I think that's, I think ultimately that's what it gets that back down to, right? Is that nobody, no, none of us know how we're gonna actually be in the moment. So all we can do is A, have faith in our own ability to do our best and choose to believe that those around us, even when their reactions come up way short of what we would like to see, are still trying their best. And I think if you, if you don't, if you can't believe that, I think it makes it so hard not to react and not to get it not, and not to react in ways that aren't productive and don't help and don't serve anybody. Well said, well said. Well, my friend, I am glad that you're back. I am very sorry that you and your family have had such a rough, rough few weeks. I'm glad to see your smiling face back there. Thank you so much. It's always good to be back with you. Uh, and again, definitely thoughts, uh, prayers for your friends, their families, and, and all that's going on in the world um, are, are with you. And we shall keep watching the news and randomly bursting into tears. So in the meantime, I will talk to you next week, my friend. All right. Have a great Take one. Care. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.